have you ever been here before? No? Well, welcome. So glad you could come in today. Let me tell you a little bit about us. Here at Tri-State Scape, we pride ourselves on being the Tri-State area's premier option for family fun and entertainment. If you've never done an escape room before, let me tell you a little bit about how it works. First, the object of the game is to escape the room in 60 minutes or less. To do so, you will need to work together with your teammates to collect items in the room, solve puzzles, and crack codes to open locks. You are allowed three free clues, which you can ask for at any time throughout the duration of the game. Your game master is watching and listening at all times so that he or she can give you the appropriate clue when needed. Your clue will appear as a typewritten message on a screen located somewhere in the room. Once you have used up all three clues, you can still ask for additional clues. However, one minute will be taken off your remaining time per additional clue. Why don't you come on back and we'll show you a quick tour of our rooms. First room I'm going to show you is jailbreak. Follow me. Jailbreak is one of our original three rooms that we had when we opened in 2017. To give you a little backstory, you have been convicted of gunning down a U.S. Marshal, hence why you're behind bars, and you've got to try to break yourself out before the sheriff returns. If you can do that, you win. If not, thanks for playing. The next room we're going to show you is Captain's Curse. It too is one of our original three rooms from when we opened. Welcome aboard. In Captain's Curse, you find yourself shackled to the underbelly of the ship. A little bit of the backstory here is British Navy has hit the ship with cannon fire and the ship is sinking. You have one hour to get off the sinking ship or be lost at sea forever. If I can get unshackled, I'll take you to room 13. Welcome to your room at the Crimson Lake Motel. After a late night of driving, you finally get checked into your room and you quickly realize that it's not a normal hotel room. Looks like somebody before you has been leaving you clue after clue to try to get you out alive. Can you do it? Follow me and I'll take you to our next room, a haunting at Winchester Manor. As we walk in, you're gonna be walking into the porch area of the mansion. Backstory is you've come for the reading of the will of your grandparents' estate. You've kind of heard some funny things that have been going on at the manor, and so you're trying to get your stuff as quickly as possible and get out, hoping that you don't become an eternal resident of the manor. This room has been known to cause a few jumps, but if you really want to get scared, follow me and we'll go to asylum. This room is actually located in our old creepy basement, so watch your step as you enter. I think the fact that it is in our basement adds to the creep factor, which you're going to notice as you walk down the very dark steps. Inside, you start off in a very dark, tight space. Hoping not cause a The backstory for this room is that you and your friends decided to break into the local abandoned insane asylum where there's been reports of strange noises, sounds. Can you escape or will you too become a patient of the insane asylum? Now let's head to our last of the six rooms, Escape from Egypt. We're now gonna take a peek at Escape from Egypt, our newest, largest, and arguably most exciting escape room. Follow me. What's your step? To give you the backstory for this room, you and your team of archeologists have set out to explore the tomb. Unfortunately, you find that physical and mental challenges stay between you exploring and escaping the tomb. Come check it out if you think you've got what it takes to escape. Now that we've concluded the six rooms, let's go find somewhere else to talk. Hey, we're so glad to be um, partnering with the Library Summer Reading Program and just wanted to give you a little bit more of the behind the scenes of Tri-State Escape and how it became. My wife and I became quickly hooked on escape rooms, played nearly 20 of them. And for my birthday once we decided, you know, let's take my family with us to one of these escape rooms. And we played the escape room and we went to dinner that night to celebrate my birthday. And we were talking about, man, 
wonder what goes into one of these things. You know, how it'd be cool to design the puzzles, to, to be able to build the rooms and really create that immersive experience. And then the more we got to start thinking and talking about it, we realized, man, we have people that are, that are creative and can design puzzles we thought, because we'd played so many of them. We had people that were hands-on and could build things. And, and, and we had people who could, who were good at just going to antique shops and finding things that we could really, to bring our rooms to that immersive part. And so we went in February and by March, we were looking for a place and we got lucky and found a place right across from the Paramount that was able to service, not just Ashland, but the entire tri-state area. And here we are three years later and we're now have six rooms and, and looking to see what we can do next. Well, the majority of our owners are from the tri-state area and we really wanted to try to bring something to Ashland that wasn't your traditional form of entertainment. And we, we knew that escape rooms really cause families to think, communicate, to get to that common purpose of breaking out. And we just wanted to be a small part of what we see as the growing revival that's happening in downtown Ashland. We hope to be a part in the continuing of that revival and bring Ashland back to what a lot of people remember it being. We take something from the ground up. We start with just a blank slate, a blank part of our building, and we really start to go from there. Obviously, the first thing we try to do is figure out what theme do we want to center our next room around. And then from there, we start thinking about what does the backstory need to be? So what do we want people to actually try to be doing with that theme? And then we get into the whole building of the rooms from the, from the walls up and then but depending on our room, might depend on what we put on those walls. For instance, our captain's curse, all the walls are plank boards. In our escape from Egypt, we used a foam board so that we can carve it out and make it look like stone. So everything we do though, as far as building, we get the materials, we do the labor, and we really try to bring those things to life. We have people that are constantly going out and looking for props that fit the room and how we want that room to be brought to life. And once we get those props, we try to figure out, okay, now, now that we have our room created, how can we use those in puzzles? How can we develop puzzles that get people from the backstory to the end of the game? And we try to make sure that we can sequence those to where things make sense as you're working through those puzzles. There should never be a time when you have to ask yourself, why, why did that fit into this theme? Or, or I would have never known to do that or, or never, that was outside information that I didn't have. So we really try to just take everything from the theme to the building, to the creation of puzzles, to bringing it to life, and then we bring in test groups and, and we're constantly monitoring and listening to people's opinions. And some of our rooms have started one way and after a few months, we've made slight changes to continue to make sure that we're bringing these games, the best possible games to the people to play them. In our puzzles, we really try to appeal to all the senses. We also try to make sure that our puzzles have a variety of different skill sets that are required because certain people think different ways. We want to give everybody the opportunity to provide some, some sense of help as you get out of that room. For instance, we have a lot of math-based puzzles, logic-based puzzles. We have puzzles that require manipulating objects to do things. We have lasers in our rooms. We have puzzles that require people to read and to interpret words and, and, and find things in words to, to bring them out their life. We have puzzles that may require multiple steps to, to solve them where you do one thing and it gets you part of that puzzle and you do another thing and it gets you another part of that puzzle. But we really, really, really do try to make sure that our puzzles are sequenced and they, and they make sense to the, to the players. So far, I think the owners have found that the greatest challenge has been creating a room that appeals to not only the escape game enthusiast, but also to beginners who have never done one of these escape rooms before. We see groups from both ends of the spectrums come through our door, and, and it really is a challenge to create puzzles that what may seem hard to the escape game enthusiast may seem impossible to somebody who hadn't done one of these before, and vice versa. If we create something that might be manageable and really doable for the beginner. Maybe that's too easy for the escape game enthusiast. So we really have to 
try to think about our rooms and we have a variety of different skill levels in our rooms and our ratings for our rooms to try to really hit on all those levels. We have some that we really recommend for beginners. Room 13, it is more single streamlined where one thing leads to another that we recommend people start with. And then it kind of builds up to Escape from Egypt, which is almost like a, a pyramid type track where you start with a with a, a lot of information and then you're trying to single it down to one end goal. So we try to really create a variety of different paths that make it easier for some and, and challenging for others. That's a question we get a lot and it's a tough one to answer because people are naturally drawn to different themes. For instance, three out of the six rooms that we have have provide a title that's more of a creepy vibe and people were drawn to that asylum. Room 13, Haunting Winchester Manor, those all have creepy themes that draw people out. A couple of our rooms require you to start out being locked up. For instance, Jailbreak, you're, you start out behind bars. Captain's Curse, you're actually locked to the, to, the, to the wall of the ship and some people like that challenge of being restricted, having to break free of that before they can even break free of the room. And then in Escape from Egypt, in our description online, we advertise needing to be able to play on a child's playground. And for some people, just the unknown of well, what does that mean? That draws them out to that room. So, but if you really had me nail it down, I'd say Escape from Egypt is is probably the first because it's our newest and it's our largest and it does have that element of physicality to it. But one of our original rooms, Captain's Curse, continues to bring people back, continues to bring people in because of just the amount of work and time and, uh, and the theme of being on a pirate ship really draws people out. I would say a haunting in Winchester Manor, and the main reason is it's based loosely off of an event that actually happened at our location. The owner one day of the, the building brought us a newspaper clipping from an event that happened, I think in the 20s or something like that, at this location, and we decided, you know, we can take this and, and try to make it into a room. Another cool factor is we partnered with um, Greenham County High School, the art teacher there and some of their students, and then some of our employees, and we allowed them to some, paint some things on the walls that we really needed and it just turned out awesome and they did a great job and you could tell they were really excited and they immediately came back a few days later and played the room and, and you could tell that they really took pride in the fact that they had a stake in building that room that's just a cool factor our rooms are designed for eight people but you don't have to have eight people to play we've had as few as two people play we've even had a single person try to, to play our rooms and break out we can also accommodate groups larger than eight upon request. Now, once you ask us, we'll tell you, hey, this room or that room is probably better to fit more than eight people, but, but it has been done and can be doable. We also love to, to bring in youth groups, to bring in schools. We have a party room that people can use if they want to have the kids' birthday parties there. We don't charge for that. We, um, we are open Thursday through Sunday, but we'll, by appointment, bring in corporations to do team building activities. If kids want to have birthday parties on a day that we're not necessarily there, we can try to make that happen. We try to really accommodate the customer and when they are able to play. I don't think we really have a target audience. We've had kids as young as five in our rooms. We've had grandparents accompany their families to play these games. We really try to create themes and puzzles that work for all ages. Now, it is harder for some of our puzzles to be solved by younger kids, but we really think the immersiveness of our themes make it almost like they're on a movie set and they to themselves still have fun. Another thing to really point out is the fact that we go above and beyond to try to make our games handicap accessible to where we, if something has physical limits on it, we try to create another avenue so that those people can continue to play games even though they may have physical ailments that, that might make it difficult. There's only two of our rooms, Escape from Egypt and Asylum, that are, that are harder to accomplish that, but we'll do everything we can to work with you to try to make sure that those individuals can still have fun and play our games. The easiest way to book one of our rooms is to visit our website, tristateescape.com. From the website, you're able to see a description of all of our rooms, some frequently asked questions, as well as there's a book now tab where you can go in and physically book one of the rooms. It'll show how many spots are available. So if it says eight, that means our room is fully available. Any number below that, it means there's other parties that have already booked in. Now we can't control whether somebody books in with you. The only way to really guarantee is that if you book the whole room. Right now though, because of COVID and the pandemic, 
we're only allowing parties to book together. So once you book it, we'll make sure that nobody else books in with you. Also, you can call us. Our number is 606-498-9094. And we can help you with the booking process over the phone. We also have people that walk in. Now, the thing about walking you gotta be careful of is we can't guarantee that when you walk in a certain room or a certain time slot, we'll be available. That's why, again, the easiest way is to go to our website, trysavingscape.com. I love the creative side of designing the games, but what I really love is seeing families put their phones down, come together for an hour of family fun and just leave excited and happy and with great memories. We've had groups that didn't get out, but you still see them when they're walking out that door, they're smiling, laughing and having a good time. And as long as we've done that, whether you're successful or not, that's all that matters. We really want to create something that allows families to have fun. The owners at Tri-State Escape are lifelong readers and we really believe and stand behind the mission of the public library to make reading accessible to all. It's also interesting how there's so many parallels between escape games and reading. When you come to an escape game, you're almost escaping reality and you're, and you're diving into this theme of of the unknown and, and books can kind of create that same thing to where anywhere you're at you can you can dive into some other other universe or some other place and and we really just like how your mind and your imagination can take you places and we're so thankful that the public library gave us the opportunity to do this and we look forward to trying to partner with them for future events and, and future opportunities If you'd asked me this question four months ago, I'm gonna give you a different answer, but I just recently had a newborn and just being able to read books to him and try to also instill in him that, that love of reading has changed my perspective. I'm really big into the brown bear, brown bear right now because I've read it so many times that I find myself just pointing the book at him so he can see it and just flipping the pages so he sees the characters and I can just read it from, from memory. And we also like Goodnight Moon and it's another one of those that I feel like I can just flip the page and, and read it to him. But anything that I can read to him right now is just gives me great joy. The greatest advice I could give is to make sure you surround yourself with, with good people who can fill in your weaknesses. Try to try to create a team that each brings a different skill set to the scenario so that you can touch on a wide variety of areas to really bring your company to life. For instance, we, we have people in our ownership that are great with finances. We have people that are great at marketing and, and getting the message out there. And we have people that are great at just building and designing and creating. And But it, it's not just one of us that have built Tri-State Escape. It takes all six of us and in our individual skill sets to create it to what it's become today. And we got to continue to develop those skill sets, develop our areas of weakness to, to continue to see it grow. Thanks so much to the Boyd County Public Library for this great partnership opportunity. Be sure to check them out on Facebook and at thebookplace.org.